The story of the twin paradox starts with two twins, Alice and Bob. Bob decides to stay on his home planet Earth. Alice flies off to the distant planet Tatooine in a spaceship at a very high speed. After finishing her job on Tatooine, she turns around, thrusters blazing, and returns home to find that her twin Bob has become an old man during what seems to be a brief trip for her. Even though two twins begin and end at the same points in space-time, they have aged different amounts. This is the famous twin paradox, the unfortunate scene of all sorts of misunderstandings and tortured explanations. Let's imagine two extreme situations to understand this concept better. First, think about a photon, a particle of light moving at the speed of light. For the photon, time seems to have completely stopped. Its clock won't tick, and it won't age or experience time passing. On the other extreme end, you have Bob, who is not moving at all. He will age the most. Now we have the other twin, Alice, who is moving at a certain speed, but not as fast as light. Alice's situation falls between the two extremes we just talked about. So, Alice's experience of time should be slower than Bob's, but not as extreme as the photon's timelessness. Consider this analogy to get a sense of the twin paradox. Think of an odometer to measure how far a car has traveled. If you have two new cars driving on the same regular road, their odometers would show similar distances. Now imagine if one of the cars takes a bumpy, twisty path off the road and later meets up with the second car. In this case, their odometers would show different distances because they took different routes. This is the same thing that happens in the twin paradox. A clock is like an odometer which measures the distance in space-time. The reading in the clock is called proper time, and it measures the distance traveled by the observer along a certain trajectory in space-time. What is a trajectory in space-time? You have a space axis horizontally and a time axis vertically. When you move through space and time, it creates a path called a trajectory on the diagram. If you're not moving, your path is straight, but if you move, it becomes a curved path. In the twin paradox, Bob stays still, so her path is straight from point A to point C. On the other hand, Alice's journey involves non-straight paths from A to B prime and then to C. Proper time is the length of the trajectory of the path in the space-time. Proper time is what the observer's clock measures, and it is the rate at which Alice, who is traveling ages, this measure of time is independent of which frame you are using. This has to do with the fact that length, which is a scalar quantity, doesn't change by going to the different coordinates. It's, this concept isn't new, even in regular space. Think of a stick. Its length doesn't change if you look at it from different angle. Back to space-time, the length of the trajectory is different for the observer at rest versus the one traveling. This is the fundamental reason why different observers experience different amounts of time passing. Since proper time is a measure of distance traveled through space-time, this should come as no surprise to you. The only surprise is that the straight path is the one with the maximum proper time. This can be traced to the way we measure distance in special relativity. All you have to understand is that the straight path has the longest length while the non-straight path has the shortest length. Since Alice's path is non-straight, it has a shorter length and, therefore, shorter proper time. Thus, she will be the one who will age slower.